There are many myths surrounding the attacks of September the 11th, 2001. Most of them stem from the official 9-11 report and government-funded agencies. But some have been developed by individuals or groups, many of whose websites are cross-linked to each other. It is impossible to know the true agendas of some of these apparent 9-11 truth sites, so their content should be viewed with caution. The impossible speed myth is one of the most damaging calling into question the speed of the aircraft prior to its impact with the South Tower. Its most virulent form is a video by an entity called Pump It Out, but it is being endorsed by such sites as Scholars for 9-11 Truth, whose homepage carries the motto, Exposing Falsehoods and Revealing Truths. Then, only a few lines from the top, New Evidence, Flight 175 Impossible Speed. Next, an unequivocal statement from the editor, proof of video fakery, and the link is to the Pump It Out video which opens like this. Yet the impossible speed myth is one of the biggest falsehoods imaginable. That a group calling themselves scholars didn't do some checking is quite incredible. While googling impossible speed may be easier, the Federal Aviation Administration's information is rather more accurate. A personal search may take some time, but brings its own reward. However, a direct link to the relevant document is included in the information about this video. If you open the document, what you'll be looking at is the Type Certificate Data Sheet A1NM for the Boeing 767 series of aircraft. And if you search for speed, you'll find this, airspeed limits, the first line of which is the relevant one. Translating the jargon, VD means vertical dive or maximum dive speed, and KCAS stands for knots, calibrated airspeed. Multiplying the speed in knots by 1.151 gives the speed in miles per hour, which means that the Boeing 767 is permitted to fly and fly safely at 483 miles per hour at altitudes up to about 18,000 feet. This would, of course, include the altitude of 700 feet, but Pump It Out's expert in impossible speed begs to differ. The plane will begin to shake itself apart at about 220 miles to that altitude. And just prior to that outrageous bit of misinformation about the aircraft, Mr. Keith had this to say about the engines. The air, they can't suck the air in, and the thing start acting as a brake. The plane maxes out the specs on the plane. The power plant will max out at 700 feet altitude at 330 miles per hour. But the turbojet-powered Phantom and the Buccaneer with twin turbofan engines flying at sea level prove that these engine types do not choke themselves at low altitudes. The FAA sets airspeed limits for a variety of reasons. Many are unrelated to an aircraft's performance capabilities, but take into account such things as undetectable air turbulence, other air traffic, passenger safety and comfort, and unpredictable dangers such as bird strikes. Aircraft designers build in huge safety margins, and modern passenger aircraft are capable of withstanding far more stresses and strains than they are likely to encounter in normal operational flying. When the 767's permitted maximum dive speed of 483 miles per hour for lower altitudes is increased by just 21%, the result is about one mile per hour less than the FAA's estimate of 586 miles per hour for the speed of the plane which hit the South Tower. To even consider the possibility that the FAA's mandated airspeed safety margin for the 767 might be lower than 21% goes beyond stupidity and Boeing would have gone out of business a long time ago if that had been their way of building planes. Impossible Speed is dated September the 21st, 2007. But prior to that, Jeffrey Hill had spoken to two people who had actually videoed the aircraft which hit the South Tower. So you were the cameraman at the time? Yeah, I was the reporter and the camera operator. John Del Giorno gets a little inquisitive himself. Just so I know, who are you with? Uh, it's just a Canadian independent. Oh, okay. An economy of truth, to say the least. The entire interview is on the Pump It Out website, but this is the shop they are talking about. The jerky movement is due to the PAL transfer, but Jeffrey doesn't ask him if the shot was faked. And you were just you you were just there, like still, or were you moving at all? Um, we were still moving. Let me let me give you a shot back, Jeffrey, just because I'm in the middle of stuff. I'm going to give you a call back a little later on this morning. All right? 
Okay, thanks a lot, John. Well, that comes as no surprise. But Jeffrey Hill did manage to speak to Park Foreman and get a little closer to asking the burning video fakery question. Well, there's all kinds of stuff on the Internet. Like, there's even a lot of stuff about people saying all the footage of the planes are fake and stuff like that. Oh, no, I was, I was standing on top of a, uh, a, top of a uh, brownstone in Brooklyn Heights. Oh, yeah? Notice how Jeffrey doesn't mention that he is a supporter of the no planes theory. He saves that for his video, in which he implies that anyone who says that they videoed or photographed a plane hitting one of the towers were conspirators in the murders of over 3,000 people. Quite a charge, that. I wonder if they still lynch people where he comes from. So, in his own defense, let's listen to Park Foreman's clear description of how he got the shot of a plane which, according to Jeffrey Hill and others, could not have been there. My neighbor was standing right next to me, and we were just watching, and I'm looking through the camera lens, and he says, uh, he goes, what the f*** is that? And I panned the camera to the left and picked up that plane. But you won't see this shot in the Impossible Speed video, presumably because it doesn't fit in with his preconceived ideas. Nevertheless, even after the video is launched, he continues to interview people who took photographs and videos on that dreadful day. Hello? Hi, could I speak to Carmen, please? This is Carmen. Listen to the entire interview on the Pump It Out website and you will discover that Carmen Taylor was guilty of conspiring to be a tourist in New York and to be on the same sightseeing ferry as Michael Herzakani. They didn't know each other, but both conspired to carry cameras and to photograph and video the North Tower fire and to capture the second aircraft hitting the South Tower from within a few feet of each other. Which is why the images can be resized to look like this not because the plane was added at the same mythical 9-11 photo and video laboratory. After showing her pictures to people arriving from the towers, someone with an office near Battery Park helped Carmen send her pictures electronically to her local Arkansas TV station, while Michael Herzakani got his famous shot to CNN. Both were aired that evening. So where does this leave us? The so-called impossible speed was not impossible. There is absolutely no proof that the majority of the photographs and videos were faked, only innuendo and vicious accusations based on little more than the fact that the accusers wanted them to be fake. They have used copied videos and unscientific methodology in their attempts to discredit people such as John Del Giorno, Evan Fairbanks, Park Foreman, Carmen Taylor, Michael Herzakani, the Norde brothers, and those who were legitimately involved in the TV broadcasts on 9-11. Yet, they have produced not one shred of evidence that would stand up in a properly constituted court of law to back up their claims and accusations. My camera experienced eye tells me that what I have seen on the moving pictures and stills are photographically accurate representations of what happened in New York on September the 11th, 2001. And as surreal as this looks, it follows that it must have been possible for the planes to do what they appear to do on the videos penetrate the buildings without leaving any parts outside. The maximum takeoff weight of a Boeing 767-200 is 197.5 tons, but let's assume that the impact weight was a mere 160 tons. The kinetic energy of an aircraft of that weight at a velocity of 840 feet per second would be immense. And contrary to what no planers would have us believe, Aluminium alloys used in the critical components of aircraft have a higher tensile strength factor than that of structural steel. But to be absolutely certain, the perpetrators could have used this kind of technology. Pushed along at over 600 miles per hour by a turbojet engine, this bunker-busting cruise missile has a head packed with depleted uranium. A diving aircraft with DU placed in its nose cone and along the leading edges of its wings and vertical stabilizer would become a huge equivalent of a bunker-busting cruise missile. So what about it, Jeffrey Pump It Out Hill? Now that you know the facts, are you going to apologize to the people you have insulted and misled and pump it back in? And hopefully, people like Dr. Fetzer and Professor Reynolds will in future be a little more circumspect before embracing such outlandish theories as the one which maintains that the attack on the South Tower was a live TV spectacular, one which simultaneously involved all of the New York stations plus CNN and some yet-to-be-discovered agency which was able to implant images of non-existent aircraft onto the retinas of eyewitnesses and into their video and stills cameras at the correct angle and sizes. Give me a break. The speed was possible. The impact was possible. The myths that they were not are busted.